Okay, let's start. Welcome back, everyone. I am very excited to kick off our second keynote speech after a great start last week. Today, we have uh, Christine Wiederkehr here. She is um, head sustainability of Nico. Nico was the first company that I thought about when we started compiling this slate of keynote speeches for this global exploration. And I had initially reached out to Miguel's COO, but he said, you know, I know someone much better for you. You should rather speak with my head of sustainability. She knows much more than I do, and she's awesome. This is how I found Christine Vidakea-Luto. And from what I learned about her so far, he was right. She is not only extremely qualified, but also incredibly kind, open-minded and a wonderful leader. Christine holds a master's degree in environmental engineering from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, uh, ETH in short, one or even the top engineering school, uh, one of the or even the top engineering school in Europe. She also holds an MBA from the York University in Toronto. Christine joins Migra Group in uh, 2005. Migra Group is the biggest Swiss retail company. And as I said before, she is now the head of sustainability there. She also represents Migra on various boards of Swiss recycling organizations. Christine loves innovation in the sustainability space and has led a whole wealth of cutting edge sustainability initiatives at Migro, some of which she's going to talk to us about today. Please unmute yourselves and welcome Christine. Christine, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, very nice introduction. Uh, I'm very delighted to be here with you in the virtual room and to share with you my insights in respect how Migros tackles the sustainability journey. And I'm very happy to share now my presentation. And you say me if you see it in a right way. Do you see it in the presentation mode now, uh, Marie? Is this yes. okay? Oh, yes, okay. It's perfect. Thanks a lot. So I will start now. Um, just one minute. So I would like to talk to you a little, a little bit about what is the Migro Group and about our strategy and implementation of sustainability. And then Marie told me that you are especially interested in our climate action processes. And I would like to show you there how we are going forward in respect to the science-based targets initiative. And then I would like to show you some examples in respect to our sustainability uh, processes or initiatives along the supply chain and value chain. And then, and then of course, I will give you a little uh, next step, what will happen um, in the future or how will the history for micro continue in respect to the sustainability. When it comes to uh, sustainability, we really like to talk about our founder, Gottlieb Duttweiler. He is a very charismatic person. And he said when he started the business in 1925, he said, that every bigger company or every company has to have a social responsibility uh, initiative and engagement. And um, he was very proud of this. And he said that a company has always have to have a social responsibility. And perhaps this is, in, this is very interesting because he said this in the early 1940s and 1950s, and you're all business students, and I'm sure you know uh, Milton Friedman and his neoliberal thesis, and he said the business, the reason of business is the business is the business and nothing else, and uh, our founder was starting about thinking how a company can be and my environmentally sound and can take social uh, initiatives in respect to have a good uh, understanding and a good engagement in respect to the whole population in, in Switzerland. 
And then in uh, 1941, um, Dutweiler converted the whole micro company uh, from a stock corporation to a from a stock corporation to a cooperative, which was very uh, modern at this time. Now many people talk about cooperatives and the advantages of cooperatives, but then it was really a through breaking uh, idea which had Gottlieb Dutweiler there. And until now, uh, his, his lifelong engagement lives on. And he said, voluntary action is the price of freedom. This is, this is very important for us still today. And he meant that for him, freedom also meant responsibility in business processes. He was also of the belief that it was preferable to take action voluntary that it was, for example, to be forced to do so by law. And we think about this the same way today. So we start to take action voluntary and we are not, we don't like to have a legal obligation for all we do. So we rather do it on a voluntary basis and do it in a way it's, it's good for us. And that's what drives us today in our business processes also in, in sustainability. Good, then for example, it's, um, it's also interesting what, what's the micro group? It's not only the biggest retail uh, chain in, in Switzerland, it, has, it is also vertically integrated. This is very special to a retail chain. We have over 20, um, 20 uh, production sites. They produce the, our own products like food products, like pasta, bread, chocolate, but also cosmetic products and so on, milk, yogurt and so on. And uh, this is very good because we are very close to the production sites and to the products and the innovation of products. And this was also like the heritage which uh, Gottlieb Gutweiler gave us. We have over 700 stores within Switzerland. We have also a commerce department with uh, additional companies like a discount. Then, uh, then we have gasoline stations. We have we are also very strong in e-commerce. We have Digitec Galax. Christine, I think you went on mute there. Okay, I didn't do anything. I just read that uh, that the moderator muted me, but I, I hope it will work now. Are you hearing me now again? Yes. Yeah, we yes. are now. That must so have been by accident, sorry. No, no, no problem at all. I, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, I think as I probably heard that we also have a commerce department. It's not only the, the retail business, it's also commerce. We have a discount, we have a books, online store, we have online store like Digitec Galaxus, we have gasoline stations, and we have small uh, micro stores under the name Microlino, which comes beside the gasoline stations. And as well, we have also a bank and a travel agency. So we are a big conglomerate and we have many uh, businesses which come together within this uh, micro group. And our vision since last year, we have our own sustainability vision, which uh, comprises the whole group. And we say we make life more sustainable for all our customers, for all our partners, or our business partners and so on. And now I would like to show you how we do this. We have, uh, since one year now, we have uh, our own sustainability strategy house. And uh, this comprises like the vision and mission. And then it's very important. We have four focus areas like the assortment, the assortment and the sustainable product, so to say, the climate and energy, the circular economy and the social cohesion. And those four focus areas, they are specified by profiling issue, issues, which should be a differentiating factor for the several companies for the micro group. 
And these are uh, profiling issues which are applicable across the whole group, but also specific for the specific uh, companies which are part of the MIGO group. And then we are very proud that we have MIGO group requirements. They are applicable for all business areas and they ensure a minimum level in all our business processes in respect to sustainability. So it's, for example, that we have a social and uh, environmental compliances along all our businesses, also along the value chain, and also, for example, animal welfare and topics like this, they are uh, incorporated in this micro group requirement requirements or embedded in this in this micro group requirements. So this is our, I would say, theoretical uh, strategy house. And now I would like to make um, a, a short uh, digression or digression respect to um, the focus area climate and energy, because uh, I think you're very interested also in this area. So we go into one focus area now of our climate, um, of our strategy house. And there um, it's very important that, for us it's very important that our, all our business activities are in line with the Paris Climate Agreement. And there we found this organization or this initiative, science-based targets initiative, which validates um, that our targets are in line with the Swiss, with the Paris Climate Agreement. And in respect to the reduction past, it means that we need a reduction of uh, between 1.23 or 4.2% tons of CO2, CO2 per year, um, depending on scope and ambition level. So this means that by this reduction pass, we are in line with the Paris Climate Agreement. And uh, last year in, in February, we signed this um, science-based target initiative letter or commitment letter, which um, tells us or which tells us that now we have to be, to set all the targets which are in line with this uh, climate agreement and all the companies which are part of the micro group have to do this now. And this is very important for us because we have a very good base that, uh, and a very big good base and also quant and also targets which are uh, in line with the whole group and the Paris Climate Agreement. So here you see the process uh, for this science-based targets initiative uh, target setting process. It's, it's a screening, where are the relevant entities? It's then a calculation based or according to the greenhouse gas protocol. It's also estimation when you don't have the suitable data. It's then setting targets which are compatible with this agreement. And then it's also, as I said, it's identification and implementation of suitable measures in respect to uh, responding to these targets. And of course, also controlling. And actually, we are, we are, right now, we are setting those targets for all those micro companies. And it's quite a hassle. And I would like to show you why. Um, it's because uh, Micro has a very complex uh, structure, as I showed you. We have a diverse portfolio, we have food, we have travel, we have financial institution, institutions. Sorry. Um, it's not always easy to get the right data there. Um, we have collect all this data. And we also have financial institutions and there, I have to say that the, the science-based targets for financial institutions, this is still in a pilot phase. So we are still learning how to do this. And also the science-based target initiative organization, they start right now to do this together with us to set those targets in respect to financial institutions. And then after we 
analyzed all our businesses and all our relevant entities, you see now how, where are the relevant um, entities and CO, CO2 um, carbon emissions in respect to the whole micro group. And you see that our food companies, they are the most important part within the micro group. And what is very important um, that it's not only our operations which are taking into taken into account here. It's also the whole upstream emissions and the downstream emissions. This is the new protocol which comes into place with the Paris Climate Agreement. That it's not only about you and your operation. It's really about the whole value value chain and all your emissions along those whole value chain. And this is the first time we did the whole calculation for all, all operations along the whole value chain. And now you see that our core business, of course, is the most important part, but also, of course, the gasoline stations, the selling of fossil fuels, the travel agency, and also the bank, the micro bank we have has a, has a significant impact in respect to our uh, CO, CO2 um, emissions. And, now we are, as I said, we are uh, taking this into account and we are setting all the targets for all those parts of the business. And again, you see those in, in the lower part of, the, of this slide, you see this tiny bit of orange uh, small part. And this is only the, the emissions we have out of our own operations. And the gray parts are all the emissions we have along the value chain. So 98% of all emissions come from the up and downstream value chains we have. From the production of the food, transportation until our our distribution centers, and then again, the use of the products, that's the downstream emissions, the, the, the transportation or the movement to the customer, how does he, does he transport his, his goods to, to his home? This is one uh, element of the downstream emissions, but also the usage of, usage of the products is all, all is taken into account. And this is the main part and not our own operations. This was also a very key finding for us because in, in the last 20 years, we, our focus was really on our own operations. And now we, we really started to think about the whole value chain and of course and of course all those initiatives all those engagements we do along these value chains this also affects cost or, or, or has costs uh, um, along the way and therefore we we have an innovative approach how we can support our climate action also on a financial basis and we started to to uh, implement in our own structure in our micro uh, in our microstructure a climate fund and this um, climate fund helps us to support our climate actions along the whole value chain. And this fund has two fundamental needs or this fund can address two fundamental needs. It can, as a first part, it can have a need that a customer perhaps want to buy his products climate neutral. So he pays something that his his pro the product he, he buys, they are climate neutral. This is one need. And the second need is that um, this is at a higher price and that is an internal incentive effect that we say when somebody in our, in our um, micro corporation um, is responsible that a product has to be fly in because there were there were a shortage or what else, they had to fly what is very climate effective, then he has to pay a higher price for this, for this flight. And this is put into a fund and out of this fund, you can uh, afterwards finance all the climate actions along the value chain. And what is the new approach is that it's not an offsetting, you do not finance pro, uh, any, any uh, 
projects somewhere else which don't belong to your value chain, the innovative approaches that you really need those funds to um, finance products which are within your value chain and help you to achieve the targets you're setting in respect to the science-based target initiative. And here is an example how this works, like a customer can offset uh, their purchase in respect to the emissions. And uh, he can do this, for example, for all the products with our online store, Digitech Galaxus. And we are very happy then since the beginning, this started in mid-June this year. And now uh, actually 10% of, of the purchases have been neutralized since this option was launched. And we were very happy. We thought perhaps one or 2% do this, but now it's 10%. And since uh, this June, and we are very happy that this uh, was, was going up so, so fast. And we hope that it will continue uh, like this because it really helps us also to support our climate actions. So here I, I end a little bit the climate discussion and I would come to some special um, initiatives in respect to our value chain. Of course, all, all the initiatives have a combination to the CO2 emissions. This is, this is clear, but still I would like to leave a little bit this, uh, this science-backed target uh, topic and I would like to come to show you some examples what we do along the value chain. And of course, as you know, also in Switzerland, we have a lot of uh, products from China. And in this respect, it's very important that all along the value chain from the sourcing to the disposal, everything is thinking through in a, in a, in a sustainability way, so to say. And I would, I would like to, to take you through to some of those steps and show you some examples of what we do in this respect. And I would like to start um, with the production. And there we have, of course, important thing is the fair working conditions. And the other thing, of course, is that we have sustainable raw materials. So, I don't know if you know this, but in respect to the social standards, we work together with some for business social compliance in, in initiative. This is important that we have fair working conditions in the sites in China, for example, but also in Eastern Europe and so on. And we do the same in respect uh, to environmental issues in respect with other standards like BEPI, perhaps you heard about this. And then, of course, it's very important that for our products, for example, for our chocolate, but also for the food, for the, for the, for the animals we, we, we sell in our stores, the meat, that we have sustainable raw products. And we, have, we can say that we have almost 100% sustainable palm oil and soy in, in, our, in our production sites. And of course, also because we, buy, we sell meat, we still sell meat, we have uh, strict Swiss standards in respect to, to animal welfare, for animal husbandry, but also short transport, transport distances in respect to animal transportation, for example. Okay, so we move on one step forward to distribution and transportation. Um, there we have the whole set of possibilities, but um, Ma Marie knows that in Switzerland, the rail system is, is very important. So Migro has a lot of transportation out of all the goods in by rail. So we are the biggest customer, the biggest private customer in Switzerland for the railway system. And this is a very important part of the whole transportation and logistics system. But of course, from the distribution centers to the stores itself, there we don't have any railway system. There we still need the trucks, but also we start to use e-trucks or hydrogen cell trucks. And we started now to have some experience with new technology there that we are at the forefront in this respect as well. 
And then, as again, as I said, in, in respect to international transportation, it's very important that you do a lot in respect to sea freight and not by air, because air is very bad for the climate. And therefore, we really try to do most of the international transportation via sea freight. This is very important. So we move on along our supply chain and perhaps from China, Shenzhen, you came by, by ship and then by, by railway system and truck, you came in our uh, branches. And there again, it's very important then that also our stores are environmentally sound, that they are built in a very good uh, way, which, which helps the environment or helps that we don't have a lot of emissions in respect to CO2. And we could reduce all our electricity and CO2 emissions in the last 10 years quite a bit. And we have in place now the new strategy as you, I have presented you before in respect to the science-based targets initiative. Also, of course, for our own operations. And we have a sustainable building standard at Migro, which helps that all our buildings, our stores are built in an environmentally friendly way. And we also do a lot with solar panels. We have solar panels on our roofs and we have uh, some uh, stores with, which produces more energy than it consumes uh, during the year. So we have more energy production through the solar panels than we um, really consume it for the store. So we can give energy into the system. This is one using we try since I would say five years now from now. Okay, and then of course, when uh, the customer was in our store, which hopefully has a good environmental standard and was built by a good environmental standard, we come to the consumption. It's very important that you also show the customer how you can do like an environmental friendly consumption. How can you behave and buy products in a way which do not harm the environment very much? And we also have a program which helps there. We have MCheck. This is like a common label system special to Migro who shows and provides the customers with easy to understand and clear information on the sustainability measures of a product. And it shows it's like it is fair trade, it is, it is good in respect to packaging and so on. And we see in an easy way what is the sustainability effort you have in respect to this product. We also motivate customers for buying more sustainable products. We have a number, we show each customer which, um, which um, is part of our reward system. So he shows how many percentage of his, uh, of his um, product, the, how many percent of the products he pay are, are sustainable and he can set targets that he buys more sustainable in the future. And of course, it's also very, very important that we have uh, important plastic and packaging concept because plastic is the big topic before Corona. Plastic was the hype topic with us. I don't know how this is in, in, in the US, but in, in Switzerland, plastic was this major topic and we really had to have a very profound and sound plastic reduction strategy in, in this respect to show that we are trying to avoid all the plastic in our packaging. And we are also trying to have like more systems in place which reduce plastic uh, packaging. And then we come to our last era, which is also very important to us. And there as well, uh, Micro has a very important part, which is very special uh, in respect for a retail uh, business. We have a very comprehensive take back system. This is also very special, I would say to Switzerland that the retailers are a very integral part of all the take back systems in, in Switzerland. So we take back a lot of plastic like pet bottles, plastic bottles, but also electric, electronical appliances, batteries, lights, lighting, CVD. 
C CDs and DVDs, sorry, and uh, per year this is almost, this is over 15,400 tons. And for example, it's only almost 9,000 tons for PET bottles. So this is a, a very um, important part also for our customers that they can bring back our packaging to our stores and then we take it back to, to the recycling um, sites and so on. And now I, I um, hope that I could show you a little bit along the value chain what we all did, um, what we are all doing in respect to sustainability. Of course, I could only pick some, some examples. And um, now I would like to end my presentation with a short uh, looking into the future, what will come next for, for Migro, but also I think for all of us which are in this uh, call today. And this will be, of course, I think the big driver for our business, for many businesses, will be digitalization. And I think Corona was a huge trigger in this respect. Like our e-commerce sales, they went up to the roof. It was, it was crazy. Sometimes we had like five or six weeks. The customer had to wait until he got the food because in Corona times, we just had the, the logistics set in place to come up with all those volumes. So this was really a huge trigger, this coronavirus for, in respect to, uh, to the e-commerce and the digitalization. And I think also in respect to sustainability, this will be the big driver uh, for the future digitalization um, in respect to e-commerce, but also I'm sure you heard about blockchain, about transparency, what you can do there in respect that the products have more transparency, where they come from, where they go from where they go to and so on, but also Amazon Go, it, it's a huge, uh, huge driver. And I think this will also come into Switzerland soon. So I hope I could give you a short insight into from, from science-based targets initiative, how we do this in respect to our CO2 emissions coming through the supply chain to the digitalization. And I'm very happy and pleased to answer your questions now. Thank you very much, Christine. That was incredibly interesting and fascinating how much one company can do. Um, mm -hmm. While you were speaking, we had a couple of questions in the chat. And so I'm first going to call on those people. Uh, while we answer those first two questions, get ready and raise your hands with your additional questions. And I'm going to call you after that. So Pierre, you had a question um, around downstream, I think. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Christine. Really, really helpful stuff. I had a question. I, I found the graph with the emission scopes really interesting. Um, and I was surprised that there was so much downstream emissions because it felt to me like retail is close to the end consumer. And so I'm wondering whether you can talk about the downstream emissions a little bit. Of course, uh, one important point is that you see that we have a uh, uh, gasoline station company and this is taken into account in all the downstream emissions, for example, because uh, all the usage of the gasoline of the customer is then in the downstream emissions. But it's also what is also important is the, the, the way from the customer from the store home which is also taken into account in the downstream emissions, um, but it's also food waste and so on. So I would say it, it comes out of our complexity as well that we have a lot of downstream emissions there as well. And as I said, an important part of course are there the fossil fuels uh, business part we have there. And then Vivas, you also had a question. Yeah, Christine, thank you so much for this um, for this wonderful presentation. I think um, my question was initially about the animal transport standards, but I guess you know towards the end of your presentation, I realized this is just a more general question. How would you apply some of those standards across borders, especially outside the European Union, uh, to the suppliers that you have who are who are shipping you materials from outside the EU? Do you mean now in respect to animal welfare or, or in general? I didn't understand this quite well now. 
Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, as one example, we could talk about animal welfare. Yeah. Yeah, so for animal welfare, we are very happy that most of our meat comes from Switzerland. So we can guarantee that there we have very short distances. But on, on the international transportation, we are also trying very hard to come up with new environmental standards in respect also to sea freight. And of course, as I had in my presentation, we are really trying hard to reduce the, the air freight because this is very bad for, for uh, the climate and, and, and so on. But we also are trying to really, we are now coming up with um, creating new standards with all these marine uh, companies to come up with better standards in this respect as well. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you so much um, for this presentation today. I, I had a follow up question on specifically the um, consumer urban offset option that you said was launched earlier this year. Um, can you talk a little bit about like what benchmarking or kind of um, who else is doing similar things? Um, and how did you think about um, doing this online only versus in person um, and kind of getting it ready for launch? Yeah, so we started with Digitech um, Galaxus, um, which is our non-food online store, I would say. And this was our try, I would say, our launch to see how this works, as you mentioned it. And as I said, I was we were very happy that all, already 10% are using it. And now we would like to transfer those um, experiences we have to our core business. So we are trying to do the same for we have a micro food online store, which is more to the retail business. It's more food, and we are trying to start there. Also, this this um, this um, offsetting or or this um, neutralizing the from the CO two uh, emissions, and then the third step would be to do the same for the for the brick stores for the stores. Uh, that, uh, that you can, that you have the possibility to say at the cashier, oh, I would like to, to offset my uh, CO2 emissions. Um, please take this into account and then you can do this also at the cashier. So we have so three steps. We started from a little innovative online store. We will go to food and from there we will go offline. That's our plan right now. Abby. Hi, Christine. Thanks for coming to speak to us today. Um, I had a question about the recycling process. Um, so once you have all of the kind of raw materials, does Migros own its own recycling facilities? Are you selling them to a recycling plant? And what happens afterward? Do you guys then buy back what's been recycled or does that just get sold on the mark open market? That's a very uh, good question. So uh, we have a very uh, core project right now in place, which uh, tries to, to come to be closer to those recycling partners. But to your question right now, we don't own any recycling sites. We have our partnerships, and as I said, we want to be closer to those partners because we realize, because we are vertically integrated, we have our own industry. We need packaging. We need recycled materials for all the packaging for our own industry. So we are the, the one company in Switzerland who, who can close the loop for, for packaging. We are the only one because not only we own our own industry. So we are really trying to have more, more power on the whole cycle. And we are really trying, especially plastic now to come up with a new project that we have a very close partnership with those recycling partners. But we are also thinking about 
uh, investing in a sorting plant because this is missing right now in Switzerland. We don't have a sorting plant for mixed plastics. We have one for PET bottles, but not for mixed plastics. And now we really would like to start to um, to collect mixed plastics and then invest in a, in a sorting plant. And then this should be a part of our own or the, we would like to, to own one and be more in this business because I think the, the circle economy is, besides digitalization, circular economy is one important innovative part. This will, will be one in one innovative business for the future. And we are really um, trying and thinking hard to be more at the forefront at these businesses. Uh, will, you also had a question. Yes, thank you. I had a follow-up question on the sustainability labeling. Um, since you've provided the transparency on the you know, carbon uh, intensity of different products. Have you seen any shifts in customer behavior? Have they started buying less carbon intensive products? We will start in March to do this. Right now, we, we don't have this transparency so far. In March, April, we'll start to have the CO2 footprint on the product, but right now we don't have it yet. And so I can't. Uh, tell you right now how this will work, but we realized that by labeling uh, sustainable products and having a clear information, uh, clear information strategy, it helps that more sustainable products are sold because meanwhile in the last 10 years, bio went up, also, um, how do you say that, not bio? Um, Organic. Organic, thanks, sorry. Organic food went up uh, and, and all the sustainable products went up because we also did a good job, I would say, on labeling. And of course, we are hoping that by um, having those transparency in respect to the, the carbon footprint, this will also help us that the, the customers will be more sorrowful in respect to buying uh, products which uh, are less or emit less carbon or less uh, carbon emissions. But we are not so far yet. So to your question, <laughs> we will start this year with this. Um, Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, my question goes back to the scope of emissions. Uh, it sounds like as you've matured to become a leader in sustainability, you've expanded your focus from just your own organization to up and down the value chain. And I'm curious how open your suppliers and customers have been to sustainability initiatives, especially when they affect the bottom line, when, it, when it's additional cost for them, and how have you influenced them? It sounds like you can make some investments, but when uh, the cost is very high for them to change, how do you influence their decision-making? Yeah, this is a very important point. I was uh, like three times on our board last autumn because we discussed all the costs in respect to this initiative we have. And it was not, it was not easy, but it was very important because now our management is, is totally in line with, with our targets. But it's a very important point you're bringing up there. And as I presented one one supporting factor could be this climate fund because with this climate fund you have customer money which customers who would like that they have a climate neutral purchase we can take this money to finance products in china to in in thailand and so on to make um, their production more um, environmental sound or, or more um, that we can really uh, reduce the CO2 emissions of those production sites. And this is really an innovative way how we can come to, to a funding scheme which helps us to finance those, um, those um, 
pro those projects along the value chain. But of course, I, I have to say that our our suppliers, they are very in line with our targets. Also Nestle, for example, which is very, I think you know Nestle, but it, it's very big also in Switzerland. They are also in line, they, they do the same. They know we have to go into these actions along the value chain and they, they work together with us. And most of the suppliers, they realize that in the long term, it's really a good way to invest in this. But when they don't have any money, what, 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 what will be the case uh, in, in some, what will be in some cases will be like this, then we can help with this fund, yes, I would say. And we also, I think what is also very important, as I said, I was on the board three times and we really have those costs now in our financial planning. I think this is also very important. You have to plan this. It's not also. It's not only an add-on. It's an important initiative, and you have to in, incorporate or to to implement this in your financing plans. Great, um, David. Thanks, Marie, and and thank you, Christine, for coming. Uh, just taking a step back. Um, we have a lot of obviously um, students from the USA here and, and also students representing other countries. I'm wondering what you think about the efforts you guys have been made is specific to the Swiss context or what could be applied kind of more generally in, in different um, maybe regulatory environments. Well, I would say like the science-based targets initiative, I think this is really an initiative which could be, could be uh, it is a global initiative, I think. This is the way to be. I'm totally convinced that everybody on the long term has to do this. Every corporation has to go into this direction to, to save to save our planet. It sounds like, oh my God, but I think it's really very important that, that every corporation goes, goes into the next year into this direction. And I, as I said, I, I really think it's it's a global, it's a global initiative. And I think that many of those initiatives uh, I was presenting could, could are or could be transferred to global level. Also the business social compliance initiative is, is not only for Switzerland, it's, it's more a global initiative. Also BEPI for environmental compliance is a, is a global initiative, uh, for example. For us, it's really important because we also do a sourcing far abroad in China in Thailand, in Eastern Europe, it's really important for us to, that all those standards are, are sound and accepted on a global or, or over regional international level. So I really think that all those initiatives could also work in the US, for example. But of course, I would say that the Swiss customer is more more viable or more alert to all those environmental issues in general. But I think it, this is only a time factor. Uh, Kyle. Thanks for being here, Christine. Really interesting. Um, my question is actually on just the, you touched on the kind of the financial tracking of, of a number of these initiatives and kind of them overall as well. Totally understand the cost side and, and tracking that's of, of, of real importance. But what about, you know, the value that's created um, kind of beyond the obvious positive environmental impacts? It, 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 do you all kind of really track the potential value and revenue or, you know, other value that's created along the way for these types of projects? No, we don't have a system in place. We, we try it that we have like, um, for, of course, it's not only the revenue which, which counts for us, it's also how the customer sees us. And there we have a lot of, of um, journeys going on, which tell us uh, what is the, the main heart of Micro, how the customer sees us. And there we see that our that all our initiatives are very important and that the customer um, sees us the way he does because we do all this, but we don't, I have to say, we don't have uh, scientific scientific uh, methodology who, who shows exact the exact value. 
But what we did last year and what was also very important for the board of the Migro is that we really um, place sustainability and sustainability efforts close to the customer. We had a very scientific approach the last 10 years and now we really said we have to come close to the customer. What is important to the class customer? And I think this was a really um, changing in mind for us that we not totally changing our minds, but that we had a new approach that really the, the customer is is the, is is the main part of, of our of our initiatives. But of course, we also have still the scientific approach. But in respect to the value, it's just important that also the customer values the efforts we do. Thank you so much, Christine. Again, overall, this was a wonderful presentation and extremely fascinating and congratulations on everything that you and Miguel are doing. Um, with this, we would conclude the first section and I would ask all the participants to come back in five minutes and we can lean for the second part and the debrief. So that would be 9.57. And Christine, thank you so much again. Thanks again for your attention. I, it was really a pleasure for me. I really liked it. I loved it. And I wish you all the best and stay healthy. And thank you for the invitation again. You can all maybe unmute yourself and clap for.